Well, just the sort of weather the fans were hoping for this evening. It's absolutely ideal. I'm Derek Ray, and joining me for commentary is the former Arsenal defender, Lee Dixon. And we have live action from the FA Cup to bring you today. It's Walsall, and they face AFC Wimbledon. Well, I suppose at this stage in the tournament, you can dream about the final, but an awful lot of football to be played, an awful lot of hard work, another step towards the final. I'm really looking forward to this one, Derek. Well, he has to be regarded always as a dangerous opponent, but what should we expect to see from him in this game, Lee? He's really hit form of late. The defenders are really going to have to watch him. Four goals in the last three matches. The initial 11 today for the hosts. A standard 4-4-2, a formation you know well from your playing days, Lee. Yeah, I like this formation, Derek. It's very, very important that when they haven't got the ball, they all stick together. Very solid look about it. When they don't have the ball, very important that they stay close together in midfield. The back four will link across the width of the pitch, but they've got to help the forwards. The two up front Thank need you. width. Enjoy the game. This is how the visitors will set up today. The wing backs are going to be crucial in this setup. You've played in that position, Lee. Yeah, I didn't really like it. And we always thought when we were playing against five at the back with the wing backs exposed like this in this formation, that a 4 4 2 can really create a 2v1 down the side. So keep your eye out for that. And the three narrow midfield players supply the support for the two forwards up front. My goodness, the importance of getting there was not lost on the keeper. McDonald. They do pass them. And he takes on the shot. And how about that for reflex action? Perfect, perfect goalkeeper. He waited, he waited, and then look at him spring. Another corner. And he's fired over the corner. And it all counts for naught. We've had a pair of car keys handed in at reception. A Promising looking ball. We had a bit of work to do in getting to that through ball, the goalkeeper. Thank you. Well, I'm hearing there's been a goal in one of the other games. Alan McAnally can fill us in. It's a goal for the home team. Firing it towards goal. My goodness, Lee, the goalkeeper had his work cut out for him, but delivered. Yeah, that's what they do. Look at that save, a brilliant effort. Just couldn't capitalise there. Apologies to our viewers for cutting Alan McAnally short there. To recap, the hosts did score in that game, and they now hold a 1-0 lead. Well, the perfect tackle, really, and now a throw-in. They've won back possession. An abundance of space. Can he give them the lead? Just had to keep his concentration to the maximum, and he did. The crowd is sensing momentum is with them. They've created chance after chance. Can they capitalise here? Devlin. What a vital intervention. Well, he'd be disappointed if he didn't take that one cleanly. Now let's get details of a goal that's been scored in one of the other games from Alan McAnally. It's a goal for Gillingham. 26 minutes played, 1-0. Alan McAnally with his finger on the pulse. Well, that is a defender's job to come to the rescue. A good-looking move. Devlin. Oh, 
no accuracy at all in terms of the shot unleashed. Well, it's the care and attention, all that work to get in the position and then way, way wide. Morris, Gordon. Well, the host dominating possession. It really has been impressive. Can they keep that pressure on and get the goal their play deserves? They just need to be a little bit more clinical. And the counter looks on here. Options available. And an example of a counter attack that went nowhere. I'm hearing that there's been a goal in one of the other matches. Who is it for, Alan McAnally? It's a goal for Fleetwood Town. 33 minutes played, 1-1. Regular updates from Alan McAnally along the way. Gordon. The referee knew that was foul play, but advantage and fed forwards. The first goal of the match, and the lead certainly doesn't flatter them. It's taken a while, but the pressure has taken its toll. Well, as we can see, the keeper's done his best, but there's nothing he can do from there. He's not going to miss that one. The opening goal of the game, then. I think everyone knew that was foul play, and the referee left with little choice but to award the free kick. Quick thinking to dispossess his opponent. And the referee is going to add on three minutes. Three minutes of added time. Riley. Now can he deliver accurately? Ground to make up and perhaps this corner can assist them. So the corner played into the box, punching it clear. The first half here comes to an end. Really tense battle so far, and now the second half is underway. And it crossed the touchline, so a throw in here. Gordon. Looks promising this. He'll be delighted to have won the ball, having made that difficult challenge. Well, they've lost possession of the ball. Well, this man will get most of the plaudits for his contribution up to this point, Lee. Well, he'll get an extra sugar in his tea from the coach at half-time after that great first-half performance. Still touch and go in the second half with only a one-goal lead, though. Well, I'm hearing there's been a goal in one of the other games. Alan McAnally can fill us in. It's a third goal for Exeter City. 53 minutes, please. It's there for him. Well, good defending. Clattered out of there. Dangerous-looking attack. Real danger. Can he put it away? It's there for him. Oh, he's missed the chance to extend their advantage. Oh, a golden opportunity to really put the game to bed. Substitution time it is. Gordon. He'll be breathing a sigh of relief. Ball one. Apologies for interrupting Alan McAnally. Just of note, the away side did score in that game. And their lead stands at 3-1. Gordon and a throw in forthcoming I believe there's been a goal in one of the other matches Alan McAnally it's a third goal for Southend United 63 minutes played 3-1 thanks as ever for the update Alan
Well, he's got plenty of space on the flank here. He's got to score! Still possibilities. We're now inside the final 20 minutes of the game. Morris. And attempting the through ball. Well, he did his best to remain onside, but just failed. Yeah, it was close. It was close, but that's all it needs to be, close. He was offside. Apia. Possession changes hands. The interception there. He's lost it. Gordon. And scope for them to produce something exciting. Can they convert? And it's gone in! The team's separated by two goals now. You cannot say they don't deserve it. Well, he's gone for pure power. And why not when you've got a rocket in your boot? What a strike. So, 2-0 now. Walsall goal! Number nine, Calvin Lovering. I understand there's been a goal in the Sunderland match. Alan McAnally. It's a third goal for Sunderland. 79 minutes played. 3-0. Cheers again, Alan. The hosts have really controlled possession. It's important to have strong, dominant players in your midfield, and they've got that. Just look at what that control gives you. Can they get in behind them? The referee correctly decided to play advantage. And the shot decidedly lacking accuracy. Well, he had other options as well, but he chose to shoot. And possession lost, intercepted. He's enjoying space. Space and time for the cross. Can they slot it home? Clattered away. Just a couple of minutes left for play. Now, do they mean business on this occasion? Pulls it back. Wonderful block. Quite simply, not clinical enough with the header lead. Well, headers are always difficult. It's all about timing, and he got the timing completely wrong there. Well, they have elected to go to the bench at this stage of the game. There it is, the final whistle, and that puts the official stamp on it. They are through.